Hey guys, welcome today. We are going to be reviewing a product that Wild Badger sent me, okay? This is a walk behind Edger. So stay tuned as we unbox this thing and get it put together. Okay guys, I got my little handy dandy razor blade here. We are going to go ahead and unbox this thing. See what's inside. Okay, there we go. Alrighty. So let's see what we got here. Oh, let's see here. We got a lot of stuff here. This looks like a handle. We'll go ahead and pull this on out. We're gonna have to put together a little bit of stuff here. This looks like another handle that has a kill switch attached to it. We have another handle right over here. We'll lay it aside. Here's our instructions. We may need to view that here momentarily. So let's see what I can do here. Let's pull that cardboard out. If we can pull this cardboard out right here. <clears throat> and guys, when we get this thing together today, this is a four stroke engine, okay? So, <clears throat> And we are going to take this down to my dad's house. We have several bolts and stuff that we have to use here to <clears throat> assemble probably these handles here in just a moment. And let me go ahead and pull this on out. Daniel, go ahead and pause the camera and you might have to help me get this box off the table. Okay, we got this thing out on the table now, guys. And this other rod right here, I'm not sure what this is yet, but we found that in the box as well. So we got everything on the table here. I'm gonna finish getting all the plastic and everything off. And we're gonna take a quick moment and read through the instructions here right quick. And then we'll uh, get this thing put together. Stay tuned. Okay, guys, we have read through our little book here right quick. Um, and a couple things I want to point out, especially is the safety precautions, all right? You need to be wearing eye protection. This is not eye protection. This is just my reading glasses. But when you operate this thing, I want you to have some eye protection on. Also have some hearing protection, okay? And do realize that this machine here uh, can be very dangerous. Uh, bring the camera right on around here. Just walk around here in the panel. And if you don't know what an edger is or what it how it works, you see this blade right here? This thing here spins around very fast and cuts down, cuts the grass right beside the edge of the sidewalk. So you do not want to get your foot caught anywhere in this area. This is why this has a guard on it. Do not take the guard off of here. Um, be very careful. Make sure you don't let children use this or something like that or someone who is not trained to use uh, equipment okay so definitely keep that in mind um, when using this unit now this is a four stroke unit okay so that means it runs on regular gasoline and it has an oil sump okay it's not like a two stroke weed eater or a blower where you put the mix gas in okay this unit here is a four stroke unit and we read in our owner's manual here that it takes 100 milliliters of 10W30 motor oil. We're getting ready to pour that into a measuring device here. And we're gonna pour that into the engine. And then we'll go ahead and put the gas in. It'll be regular fuel. We use non-ethanol fuel in all of our equipment. I highly recommend you do as well because you will end up having less problems with your equipment over the years because the ethanol in fuel will end up hardening the rubber uh, fuel lines and everything, kind of like hardening the arteries, okay? So it just makes things have a, it makes you have a lot of problems that you don't necessarily need. So stay tuned, we're gonna get this oil measured out, we're gonna get it installed, we're gonna get this handle put on, we're gonna get some fuel put in this bad boy, and we're gonna fire it up. Stay tuned. Guys, what I'm using here is just a mason jar. I keep this out in the shop for all my, anytime I gotta measure out a little bit of motor oil, and this one here only takes 100 milliliters, and there happens to be a scale on a standard mason jar of milliliters. And it's the first mark down there, okay? 
So I'm gonna sit here, I'm gonna take my gallon of motor oil here. This is 10W30 conventional. And we're gonna fill it right to that mark, okay? Just like so, looks like we're dead on it. So now let's go over here and fill up the sump of this thing, okay? So right here is where you take out the, um, the dipstick, okay? We're gonna pull that out right quick. Wipe it off. It appears to have some oil on it. I don't think this thing had oil from the factory though. It says that it is shipped dry. So we are going to go ahead and add that to it. Let me find my funnel right quick. Okay, we have a little funnel here off of another little fill can from another piece of equipment we have. So we are just gonna use it to fill up this reservoir. And we're gonna put exactly what it says, 100 milliliters of oil. And we're gonna see where we stand from there. Okay, 100 milliliters is a little bit too much, guys. It's uh, running out of the hole here. It's very high on the stick. So I am going to pour a little bit of that out. And then we'll recheck it here in just a moment. So maybe start with about 75 milliliters and go from there. Let's double check this right quick. Okay guys, I think we got this pretty close now. And it looks like we're right there on the max line right now. On one side it says max, on the other side it says high. So we're dead on money where we need to go. We're gonna screw this back in. And if you look in the uh, paint, paint lid right here, you'll see that we had to pour out about that much, okay? We were just about that much overfilled. So let's continue on. Let's go ahead and get this handle put together and get her fired up. Okay guys, the instructions <coughs> that come along with this are not very good. It doesn't really give you a, uh, it gives you a little diagram here, okay? And it's got a bunch of numbers pointing to a bunch of different pieces there, but I don't know if I see the breakdown on all that. I guess the, here it is right here. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. Anyway, uh, doesn't really show where the bolts go in, so I'm just gonna kind of wing it. I'm using my mechanical ability here. It shouldn't be a problem. Looks like we have four, um, looks like eight millimeter uh, castle bolts here. I'm gonna take two of them. Evidently two of them is definitely gonna have to be used here on this handle down here. So I'm gonna go ahead and notice how we have the triangle or the square right there. So that tells me that this bolt is gonna go in there just like that, where that can hold in that little square. Same thing over here. We'll put it in the hole as well. <clears throat> we'll turn it to where it locks into place there. And let's see what we have here as far as hardware. Looks like we have four flat washers for each one of these bolts. I'm gonna go ahead and put a flat washer and a wing nut on here. Not sure what these small wing nuts are for yet. Oh, I think I know, and I'll show you guys in just a moment. Okay, so I'm just using process of elimination here to get this baby put together. No big deal. I've, I've, uh, I've had stuff like this before. Sometimes they don't do as good a job as maybe they could on instructions. And maybe that's something that uh, the Wild Badger Company will um, maybe reanalyze the, uh, the um, instruction manual after seeing this video. So let's go ahead and finish tightening these up. I'm not going to go too crazy with them yet. And now we'll move on to hooking up the handles. Okay, we're going to go ahead and put the handles on. Uh, the left handle, I'm sorry, I guess it would be the right handle. Uh, looks like in the picture that it actually goes, the handle goes on the right side. So we're going to go ahead and do that. You have three different uh, settings that you can put this at, if you'll see. I think what we're going to do is go ahead and stick it in the middle one, just like so. And let me go ahead and get my washer and my wing nut. And we will tighten that up. 
right here. Not going to go too crazy with it yet because I think there's a cross brace that we have to put in place here in just a moment. I think that's what the little wing nuts are for. So I'm going to go ahead and install this one as well. We'll put it in the middle setting as well. And put the washer and well, I need an extra hand here. <laughs> okay, here we go. I got it now. All righty. All right, let's move on to that cross brace. Okay, what we have here, last part laying here on the table is a cross brace and looks like it goes in a little bit different location than it does in the picture. They must have done maybe an upgrade on this thing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and loosen one side there. That's why I didn't tighten them up all the way. Let me come around here where I can get to it a little bit better. And let me loosen these up just a little bit. And keep this brace. There we go. So we're good right there. I'm going to loosen it just a little bit more. And voila, there we go. Okay, so there's our cross brace. And it come with these, these two little small wing nuts here. And we're going to put them in place. Nathaniel says he can film the video and put the one on that side for me. So we're going to go ahead and uh, do that right quick. Can you do it, Nathaniel? So just lay right here. <laughs> uh, yeah, go ahead. All righty. Okay, guys, things are going really well. I'm going to go here and uh, tighten up all these right quick. And we have a few more zip ties to put in place as well. Okay, we have three little clips here. And I'm just going to randomly put these in place. And that's for this cable here as well. So I'm going to put one right here. I'm clamping it into place. If I can. So there we go. I'm going to come up about right here maybe. Put the second one. My second one right in this area maybe. Third one will go right up here. In this general area. And then it comes with a couple of wire ties. And I think what I want to do is put one kind of up this way because I don't want this cable to be uh, crooked. I want it to be really secure right up in this area. I'm just going to go ahead and put a wire tie right here, like so. And that should be good enough right there. There's a couple of them here. Let me stick another one down this way. Another wire tire there, and maybe, maybe one right in this area. And that should keep our throttle cable pretty secure, okay? So there we go, guys. So let's put some fuel in it and go fire it up. Adding a little fuel here, guys. Okay, guys, with it all fueled up, we're outside with it now. We're going to go ahead and crank it. And there is a bulb on the bottom here. It tells you to pump it seven times. So we're going to go and do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'm going to give it one to grow on. Okay. You have a start and a run position. Um, I guess that would transfer over to choke and run as well. So we've already pushed this lever to the upper position. We're going to pull on it until it cranks. And then we'll get it uh, put back into the run position. So let's try to, let's give it a pull. There we go, guys. Sounds like she's running pretty smooth. I went ahead and put the, uh, the um, adjustment for the edger on the top position. But I wasn't sure if it would actually be spinning or not when we cranked it up, and it's not, so that's good. It evidently has some type of little clutch in here. Probably a little centrifugal clutch, which is good. 
allows the engine to idle. I'm gonna let it warm up just a minute and we're gonna take it over here and give it a little throttle and we'll see if we can cut the edge on the sidewall. Okay, it's warmed up just a little bit. I wanna show you here. I'm giving it a little bit of throttle here for my hand and we can see the uh, blade is spinning right there. So let's take it on down here and we're going to see if we can uh, edge the sidewalk right quick. Okay guys, I'm not revving it up really high right now. Looks like I'm going to have to uh, lower the deck just a little bit. Let's go about midway. Looks like there's one, two, three, four, five positions. Let's go to the third one right here. Let's just see how she does. If I can get her to fit down in beside the... Let's see here. I'm gonna bring her down just a little bit more, guys. We'll see if we can bring her all the way down. Okay, let's just see what we got here. Take a quick look here. Bring the camera on over to Daniel. Come back this way, buddy. Now, we have just experienced a lot of rain here in the last few days, but hey, I think it done pretty good. It definitely cut our edge here. That was pretty easy. Probably going to take, take me a little bit of getting used to using a uh, walk behind edger as well. So let's load this thing up. Let's take it down to my dad's house because he's got a huge driveway and we can get some practice on this thing and really check this thing out. So let's get her loaded up. We'll see you in a few. Okay guys, hey, we're down here at uh, my dad's house now. Yeah. We've already got it off the truck. We've got it fired up and we're gonna go ahead and try to cut up this driveway here. So Nathaniel's gonna film a little bit while I'm doing that. So let's get her going. <laughs> Okay guys, as you can see, bring the camera down here, you can see where we've been so far. We're going to get the blower, we'll blow that off here in just a little bit. Ground's still a little wet here, we've had a lot of rain here this week. Uh, so we're going to continue on, we're going to head down this way, bring the camera down, you can see what it's going to look like before. Grass hasn't really started coming in that great yet here in uh, the North Carolina area. But you can, can see that there still is some greenery that's growing over the edge here, so we are cutting something back. So we're going to continue on and we'll give this thing a little bit more testing.
Hey guys, here's some of the uh, area of the sidewalk that we done. We actually stopped because uh, it looked like the um, the ground's just still just a little bit too wet. You can see a big old clot right up here at the top of the hill that it uh, kicked up in the guard. So we're gonna hold off and we'll probably make another video here uh, in the up and coming weeks or maybe next month after the uh, grass comes in a little bit better. Those things seem to be working pretty good. Okay guys, that's gonna just about conclude our video today. Um, uh, it seemed like it was a little bit too wet out here. And what was happening was, if you bring the camera down here, we were getting a lot of mud that was building up inside our guard here. And I was afraid we were gonna end up um, uh, maybe putting added stress on our clutch assembly or what have you. So we're gonna make, we're gonna wait for another day. We'll do another video. But um, as you can see, it it works pretty good okay uh it seems like it does have plenty of power you know to cut a trench um especially on a dry day it would be a lot better typically people don't edge when it's wet anyway even even landscapers they will not use a stick edger on a wet day they'll use a weed eater on a wet day and only use their stick edgers when weather permits okay because it just makes a big old mess and uh, you end up having to clean up the driveway but guys, uh, here is the, uh, the wild badger, um, four stroke, um, edger, and it seems to work pretty good. I think the price point on these things is anywhere between, I found 219 and 260 something. Okay. I found them online at, uh, Home Depot and Lowe's. I did not see one on Amazon. Uh, if I do find one, I will put a link down below. But right now, uh, it looks like they're not on Amazon at the moment. Uh, they may be sold out, I'm not real sure. But you can pick these up through your local Lowe's Home Improvement and or Home Depot and some other places as well. Thank you for stopping by, checking out our video today. Thank you to Wild Badger for sending us this unit to uh, unbox and product review. And we will see you guys next time. Take care, don't forget to like, Comment and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Take care.